Out of all the apostles, I think Peter is probably my favorite. He's that flawed human being who makes countless mistakes and professes profound ignorance of Jesus, earning him many loving rebukes from the Lord. Bless his heart, Peter tries, but he keeps falling short. And yet, the Lord loves him anyway, just like me, flawed and yet loved. But crucially, Peter learns and wants to do better, and he sticks with it, and he's increasingly humble, and he eventually comes to understand that true wisdom begins with humbly accepting that we'll never have all the answers, but we can rely completely on a God who does. Accepting this fact that there is knowing in not knowing, well, that's the beginning of true understanding and true wisdom. So I think we genuinely like and identify with Peter because he reminds, him, he reminds us of ourselves. Mistakes abound. We lack full comprehension, but crucially, we're striving. We stick with it. We learn. We pivot. And every day, we get a little bit better in an arc that bends inexorably toward the Lord. Today's readings on the Transfiguration offer a wonderful example of this because as the Lord is transfigured, Peter is transformed. And we are called to similarly transform ourselves. So let's see how. In the gospel, Peter initially gets it wrong. By offering to build a tent for Elijah, Moses, and Jesus, Peter is erroneously equating Jesus with Elijah and Moses, that Jesus is just another prophet, another giver of the law, a classic Peter mistake. He never quite gets it. And so the voice of the Father comes down and subtly rebukes Peter, explaining that, no, Jesus is far more than a prophet, though he is also that, and far more than a lawgiver, though he is also that. He is far more. He is my beloved son. Listen to him. And to his credit, Peter is then silent, says no more, which is the proper response in this circumstance. Instead, Peter ponders those deep words from the Father and their meaning. And in that process of inner contemplation, reflecting on all he had heard and seen, Peter begins to change. To see how much, we only need to look at that second reading from his letter. For that second reading is from the second letter of, of Peter, written much later in Peter's life, years after Jesus' resurrection, years of being able to look back and reflect on what he has seen and heard back at the time of Jesus' transfiguration. And the change we see in Peter in that letter is remarkable. He's clearly learned his lesson. For nowhere in that, leader, in that letter does Peter make any vain attempt to explain Jesus' transfiguration. He doesn't attempt to put feeble human words into majestic actions of the divine. Instead, in this letter, Peter will earn no rebuke from the Lord. Instead, Peter testifies only to the absolute truth that John, James, and he witnessed that day, the glory and the majesty of this mystery. Jesus, dazzlingly white, a glimpse into the beatific vision, and how we will be similarly transfigured when we arrive in his heavenly kingdom in ways that we can't possibly imagine. Peter invites us to ponder this mystery in a similar manner because it is in the pondering where we rest with God. For as he describes in the letter beautifully, I think, this is all Peter can do, all any of us can do, to be attentive and to offer a dim lamp in the depths of the darkness so that we can see just a little bit sufficient light to observe the area immediately around us so we can walk forward without stumbling. And we can use that lamp until such time when the glorious sun rises in the dawn, when the dim light of the lamp will be overwhelmed by the radiance of that sun. And then we will have all the light, warmth, and comfort that we will ever need. So like Peter, let us be similarly transformed.